Hebrews 11 honors the champions of faith who wandered in deserts and in mountains and caves of the earth. Because of this cloud of witnesses, we can run with patience the race that is set before us. Shalom. Hello again. Well, here is the last program on our Champions of Faith series. Uh, we took up the personalities dealt with in the chapter Hebrews 11, which is about faith. That chapter begins like this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I remember an early Bible lesson when I was with Campus Crusader where a teacher said, you know, things are made of atoms. We can't see those atoms. Nobody's ever seen one. But the things we do see are made of things which do not appear. That, that was very really interesting. Well, we uh, dramatized some of this. Uh, we, we got Israeli actors and costumes of their periods and... and uh, uh, we dressed them as the heroes of the chapter, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, so on, uh, the examples of faith given in the chapter. And so we'll go now to some of those dramas and also to the songs uh, that I composed for this series. So we'll begin with Abel, then Enoch, and Noah. And Abel gathered stone from the earth to build an altar to Jehovah. He brought kindling and lit the sacrificial fire. As he tended his flock, he thought of what he could offer unto the Most High God that would be worthy. What should it be? The God of the universe had formed the world and everything in it. Everything in the heavens and on the earth came from God. Abel's brother Cain would offer the fruit of the ground, but Abel would give his most precious possession, the best that he had. The herdsman searched his flock and chose one spotless and without blemish to give glory and honor to God. The Lord, who walked in the garden with Abel's father, Adam, looked upon Abel's heart and found it good. The shedding of blood would be acceptable in God's sight. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke well of this sacrificial offering,
the day take a walk in the garden let me show you the Well, our next heroes of the faith are the patriarchs of the Jewish people, Abraham and Isaac. Uh, We're going to start with the song, A Night with Abraham. Uh, you know, I was an oboe player uh, when the Lord called me, and I uh, have kept it up through the years, and I played oboe on all of these songs, and we recorded some in the studio, so uh, you can see that going on. At least you can see what an oboe is. Some people write in and ask what it is, so you can see what it is. It's like a clarinet. But um, uh, in writing the songs, you know, I always say God just sends them. I'm the stenographer. I don't mind bragging on them because they're really not mine. I write them down, so to speak. But I kind of know how the scripture writers felt because they come very easily. I know when they're right. Sometimes they take literally five or ten minutes to, to make a song. Well, now to Abraham, Isaac, and A Night with Abraham. Now I don't know which way you'd have me to go. How can I trust that I know your way? I long to hear you. How will I know? Oh Lord, I stand amazed in your presence, willing to stand the And the skins of goats were placed upon Jacob's hand and upon the smooth of his neck as he disguised himself as Esau, his brother. His mother, Rebekah, had devised the plan to deceive his father, Isaac. As Jacob entered the tent, he brought forth a meal of wild game, which his father had requested of his brother Esau. Isaac was old and weak, and his eyes were dim. He would believe the deception. Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou beest my very son Esau. Art thou my son Esau? And Jacob said, I am. Jacob gave the savory meat and bread to his father, who ate it and was pleased. Reassuring Isaac that he was Esau, Jacob asked his father for the blessing that was rightfully his brother's. May God bestow his blessings on you from heaven and the earth. For by faith, Isaac gave his blessing regarding things to come. Oh, throughout the wilderness, for 
of Olives, sail across the Sea of Galilee, ride to the summit of Masada, float in the Dead Sea, find the treasures of Petra. Explore the Holy Land for yourself. Join me on our next tour to Israel. Come walk with us in the shadows of Abraham, David, Paul, the champions of faith. Travel the length and breadth of the promised land. Discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. From baptism in the Jordan River to communion at the Garden Tomb, your trip to Israel will be a spiritual experience you will never forget. Come join us. Tour the Holy Land with Zola Levitt. Well, that's Israel, the place where most of our champions of faith resided and where the book about them was certainly written. And uh, we are reviewing all of the programs uh, on this uh, particular program. Uh, there's 10 programs in all in the series, and it is available on videotape. Also, you can obtain a cassette of all of the songs, uh, an audio cassette. I think the videotapes is the way to go. I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, the open of a program is very important, and uh, to choose a drama for that, we picked uh, Gideon and his uh, army of men. You know, he had a remarkable plan, which the Lord gave him. You know the story, he put out the fleece. He wasn't sure he was called. He was not particularly the leader of Israel or a great general, but God picked him for the job, as he will do that with us sometimes. <laughs> And uh, when he had determined that it really was the voice of God, he called his men together and he explained to them the remarkable plan that the Lord proposed. The Lord made his army very small, so he went forth with a few good men and uh, uh, a very special plan which we showed in our opening drama. Let's go to that right now. Encouraged and instructed by Jehovah, Gideon, commander of the Israelites, went to his men bringing the battle plan the Lord had laid out for them. Gideon divided his army into three companies. The plan was to distribute empty water jars to each of his men, in which a torch of burning oil would be placed. The jars would be broken in the middle of the night at his command as they surrounded the enemy in a surprise attack. Gideon's small group of 300 men had been reduced from 32,000 men. It was God's plan. The Midianite forces were so strong, they appeared as thick as locusts in the valley below. Their camels as many as the sand by the sea. When Gideon blew his trumpet, it would be the signal for his men to join him in blowing their trumpets and breaking their jaws. Armed with more faith than weapons, Gideon would lead his small band of soldiers to victory for Jehovah. Their battle cry, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. By faith, their weakness was turned to strength, and they became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Many of our viewers will recognize Suzanne Davis from Beloved Thief and the After Christmas Musical. Here are three of the songs she sang for us. Your hand outstretched upon the cross, reaching for the sons of men. Lord, I hear you praying for those who still are lost. To simply ask, forgive me, Lord. I
There certainly were uh, champions of faith in the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. So we took up the lives of two who, who really suffered for the faith, uh, Paul and uh, the martyr Stephen. And uh, we told their stories. As a matter of fact, uh, we used their very dramatic stories uh, for dramas. Uh, let's go to those now. An instrument of torture, a place of reproach, a Roman whip, a cold, dark prison cell. For the Apostle Paul and many of the first century Christians, these were the instruments of faith. The people of the land were often the victims of scourging, a form of punishment that was often failed. The number of lashes was determined by the severity of the crime. In the case of Paul, the whipping would be the result of malicious charges against an innocent man. Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. Five times I received forty stripes save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and came upon him, charging him falsely of blasphemy. They cried out with a loud voice and ran upon him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him.
שלי, לא להאשים אותם. And Stephen cried out, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Would you listen to the master when there's no relief in sight? From the heat of the day to the darkness of the night. Would you listen when you're tired, when it's been a long, hard day? Would you pay him close attention and hear everything he says? Would you cross a barren desert with a sick or even blind? Would you hurry on ahead, leaving all the lame behind? Hurry quickly to the teacher, taking everyone you can. This is one of his commandments, you must love your fellow man. Listen closely to the master, not your comfort and your pride, for to die to who you think you are is to find the Well, there's a modern comedian that uh, has a top 10 list on his program. Those are our top 10, <laughs> the top 10 of the faith uh, out of Hebrews 11 and with the addition of uh, Paul and Stephen. But you know when you think about it, if you've heard Christian testimonies, you know that there are millions of such stories. There really are. There are even more dramatic stories than are told in Scripture. Uh, generals have been called who are as tentative as Gideon and uh, uh, young uh, boys have gone forth like David and slew their Goliaths and uh, it's, a, it's a normal part of the Christian life. Well, we gave teachings on each uh, of the uh, characters in the scripture. We were on location in Israel and uh, we had interviews with believers who experienced some of the same tests in their own walk of faith that, that the patriarchs and the generals and the people uh, we selected uh, experienced. For each program, we chose a Jewish believer and a Gentile believer, but I want to stress that there really is no such expression. There's neither Jew nor Greek in Christ. Once a person is a believer, as a matter of fact, to be technical, we're all adopted into the Israeli heritage. Uh, the Gentiles are no more Gentiles because that word really means pagan. Uh, when the Lord used expressions like, do you greet your friends? Only even the Gentiles do that. He meant even unbelievers do that, not simply non-Jews. So uh, in reality, we're all the same in Christ, all subjects of his kingdom, all uh, adopted into the family of Israel. Uh, the tests that uh, were suffered back then and are being suffered today, tests of courage, tests of suffering, 
tests of true belief. You know, the church in, in China is being persecuted. Gosh, I know so many stories. I guess I've told it before, but a story that thrilled me was about when, when communist Russia was uh, uh, crushing Poland and, and they stopped church services. And in one church, uh, two young men came in with rifles and said, the church is closed, everyone out. And uh, nobody moved at first. They said, all right, we'll give you five minutes. Anybody that's in the building at the end of five minutes will be shot. And there the believers had a real test. And I understand some of them got up and left, but not all of them. In fact, not even half of them. Most of the church was still seated after five minutes, and the young men closed the doors, but then they put their rifles down. And they said, brothers and sisters, we're sorry for this hard test, but we're true believers too, and at a time like this, we wanted to pray with only the truly faithful. I don't know if I'd have got up and left the church, but that's quite a test. Each of us is given, however, the gifts we need for the walk we're walking in the Lord. I presume we're given the courage it takes to meet those tests. Well, you can get the whole series on videotapes, uh, 10 programs plus the music program, really 11 in all. Uh, $99 for the videos, and that is complete. Everything you saw on the shows, just as we showed them on the air. You can get the cassette of the songs, uh, Champions of Faith. It has the same name. That's $12 for music you saw on television. We can't take the television time to play each song in its entirety, so we kind of cut them a little bit. So you'll hear more on the cassette than you heard uh, on the TV programs. And folks, now that we're at the end of the series, I have to ask you to help us with the funds. Your, your gift now is absolutely crucial. We're way down uh, in our reserves uh, to pay for this post-production. Thanks for thinking of that, and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you.